Welcome to Unedited, brought to you by RCO Network. RCO Network, good people, better business, discovering the best of you. Uh oh, there she is. <laughs> <laughs> Cut her off guard. I know, I know. We changed up the script. So I was like, where did I put my notes? And turns out that I put them away. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let me Every... do a part for you. Oh. <laughs> what? Okay. I got it. Every Thursday, we get personal <laughs> talk to innovators and explore what it is to be an entrepreneur. We will be taking questions live, type in those comments and questions during the broadcast and be sure to hit the heart emoji because we love the loves. And go ahead and smash that like button uh, here on Facebook and follow us at RCO Network, Instagram, LinkedIn. Also head over to rconetwork.com for more information about marketing your business and sponsorships during these broadcasts. Hello, Ms. Ragnes, how are you? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> so glad I caught you off guard today. It happens. You know, we get, you get busy and we get caught up in, you know, with business and everything that got going on, you know, sometimes you just got to go with the, go with the flow. Go with the flow. That's, I think that's like our motto. Yeah. Possibly. Got to have a beer too. So um, today's topic is very interesting and um, uh, I wanted to bring it up to your attention. It's probably be me entering both you and our guest, but um, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, uh, business and the things that we have to do as entrepreneurs, uh, we face a lot of, you know, adversity, trials, errors, all that good stuff, you know, and I like, and what I appreciate about our network and what we do is we have a platform where people can talk and have open discussions and feel, you know, safe um, uh, with whatever subject matter, whatever, whatever's on their mind that they can come to us and then we can discuss it. And today's topic is, is one of those things where, you know, if you're in a business setting and somebody makes a pass at you, Ms. Rogers, I don't know if you've experienced anything like that. Yeah. And that pass was unwanted per se. So what happens? Everybody scurries around and then um, there's, you know, HR gets involved and there's I've reports written. <laughs> Yeah. I've never gone that far, but yeah. um, also most of the time that has ever happened, it is when I'm hosting. So it's um, yeah. was never mortgage related, but um, out at a bar hosting karaoke or trivia, not necessarily a coworker. That's most of my experience with that. Yeah. And um, what generally happens and what I've seen happen is that uh, HR gets together and all of a sudden they have like, um, you know, the, 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 whatever class, right. The, the workshop on, and it's very monologue. It's like you, this is the things you do and don't do in the workplace regarding, you know, um, sexual proclivities, you know, passes, uh, you know, unwanted, you know, dates, whatever, whatever it is. They usually... I think I've been to one of those classes, but it's never been because of me. I feel like, I feel like I definitely don't play into that, I guess, in the workplace. So if there was ever a time that it was Hey, oh my gosh, like getting inappropriate. It's like, okay, bye. Like, I just. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually, we'll <laughs> delve into that a little bit more too. But, you know, um, when I spoke to our first guest, uh, or our only guest, uh, we've actually made some changes regarding the show and uh, I have some exciting news and other things to bring to you. But we're uh, going to introduce our guest first. But we're going to be hitting upon that subject and um, again, talking about. Uh, what sex means in business. And I think as an entrepreneur, sometimes you face these things uh, singularly and alone. Like, who do you go to? Um, again, we want to provide this platform, RCO Network, for people to feel safe and have these discussions. And I think um, talking to our guest and introducing and meeting her, it kind of sparked an idea. And I think, uh, uh, well, well, we'll just go with the show. <laughs> we're we're going to call it go with the show, not go with the flow. Go with the show. 
uh, which would, uh, sure, that works too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our first guest, uh, she is a 2009 Mont St. Mary University alumni with a bachelor's degree in business administration with a certificate in entrepreneurship. Previously, she has been a manager for nonprofit organizations and retail businesses, a healthcare advocate, and an educator for a public school system for the past eight years. She is also CEO of Arizona Notary Signing Agents, a mobile notary uh, providing services throughout Maricopa County. She's also the content creator and host of El Mixor, I think, or El Mixer. I think I actually have a photo that I can show. <laughs> She is the host of El Mixer, a local business networking radio show. So with all that said, please welcome Miss Jacqueline Villalobos. Hello. Thank you guys for inviting me. This Hola. is going to be exciting. <laughs> you didn't have that ready. No, I had the volume down. <laughs> Can't have a studio audience. So you gotta make up. Go with the show. Go with the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We're going to be a motto now. I, I feel like that I'm changing the motto. <laughs> <laughs> so I, th I think today's interview is going to be largely interviewing both of you guys versus me, maybe a man versus woman show. I, I don't know. That's, that's kind of what I envisioned, but this is a topic that I think uh, sometimes entrepreneurs, um, you know, we face, have you either one of you, and I guess I'll address it to Jacqueline first is um, have you ever faced adversity when it comes to you being a woman? Ah, uh, um, you know, I think, how you face it has to do a lot with whether you actually like go through it or not. Um, you know, just learning as a human being, whether you're male or female on how to navigate through adversary or adversity is, is cha a challenge in itself. Um, as a woman, I, I can say that there's been times where, um, you know, it has been brought up, you know, well, oh, you're, you're too young and pretty and, you know, I'm not like just throwing flowers at me, but it's, I, I kid you not. I've had interviews where I, at the end of, of going through a whole process, I've been told, you know, you, we can't give you the job because the boss's wife is kind of jealous and <laughs> you're a girl and you're pretty and you're young. So you've we're going to have to you've pass. Actually, you've actually been told that before. <laughs> I've actually been told like, and it's crazy, like, you know, but then again, it's like, that's never stopped me from continuing the endeavor. And, you know, now I've decided to kind of be my own boss. And <laughs> imagine being, imagine being like the person on the other side of it, like the bosses, like the bosses letting his wife run how he runs the business and can't like, I feel like that's just so restrictive. <laughs> Right. It's like, who would want to work there anyways? <laughs> right. right. You have her like peeping in like, hi, I'm his wife. <laughs> so, and, and, and I'm glad you actually had that experience because I don't think many people really get to hear the truth of things. You know, so many times it's like, oh, let me, let me, uh, oh, we'll, 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 we'll get back to you. Uh, we'll go, we'll call you later. And then you have the interview, you think you did really well. And then all of a sudden it's just like, well, you know, two weeks later, I'm like, oh, hello. Are you right? What's going on with your job? What's going on with the position? Right. And so, you know, I, I've had moments in, in, in my life where I felt kind of uh, out of place, out of sorts for various different reasons, but I can only imagine what that's like being a female coming into an entrepreneurial role. You know, um, you know, Kelsey was talking about being hit on, you know, at the, at the bar during, you know, karaoke night and Jackie, you do karaoke too, right? Oh yeah. I love karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one thing I knew you guys, you know, like together. But. Oh, you didn't want to tell us ahead of time that we had something in common. I see how it is. <laughs> we could have, we could have practiced. We would have been on time. <laughs> great. There's a keyboard behind me. It would have been, would have been great. Yeah, but, um, work, great work on that time. I mean, I mean, not only that, I guess if I think, you know, in the past I worked at car dealerships um, and just, just because it's more, I feel like male dominated, there's more of a chance that you're going to have someone like, it was more like in that scenario, making jokes. And I honestly don't mind the jokes, but there is obviously going to be a difference between if you're working where there's a lot more women versus a lot more men, there's going to be a difference in how, how things are discussed or talked about or. Absolutely. You know, to add on to that, there's definitely, definitely a different ambience, but whether it's like, because of respect or not, you know, or, be, or just simply like the gender difference, um, you know, I used to work at a car rental place one time. I've held so many jobs. And so that's kind of what's me helped too. me kind of, 
be so kind of out there and out of the box, I guess you could say. But um, I, now that you say that, I remember one time when I, when I was working at that, at that rental car place um, and the guys, um, all of us, we were like fresh college students or like, you know, people that were going through college. So we were all around the same ages. And the guys, they would like talk about their experiences and the downtime, obviously, um, you know, you about like, their sex, experience. like sexual experiences, like with women, all or? kinds, you know, like oh. going out with the guys drinking and like, I just wouldn't be able to kind of relate to that. Like, you know, so if, if, if an order would come in, you know, and they'd be, like, they would be in the middle of their conversation. I'd just be like, all right, you know, toodles, I'm going to go get that and you guys can keep your little conversation going. Um, but it was interesting because I would never feel like I was fitting in. Like it was just so hard. And for me, it was uh, besides being a female, not being able to relate to those experiences. Um, I was also a mother and a wife, you know, at a young age. So um, that was also kind of interest, an interesting dynamic in, in the whole place. Um, Sometimes, you know, I would come in to certain conversations and they would just stop cussing. (laughs) You know, that's funny too, because I feel like it's not necessarily a bad thing, the experiences, it's just a different thing because it's not like, oh my gosh, they shouldn't have been talking about, you know, their personal life. Like, I don't care realistically, like, you know, as long as it doesn't cross a boundary, talk about whatever you want. But it's funny because the conversations that a group of men are going to have and a conversation that a group of women are going to have is so vastly different, even when it's similar, if that makes any sense. Right. Well, and the, the thing I've been curious about, you know, is it, is it really based on confidence level? Because I think the more confident a woman is, the more they can kind of push that subject matter aside and be like, Oh, it's just a boy thing or you know, whatever, whatever. But if you're not really lack or you kind of like that confidence, is that something that, um, if you're not in that confidence space that you kind of like you adheres to you, or at least, you know, takes you back a little bit more. I don't know if that's been experiences either. It is, it's leading to my next question. So that's, there's a reason for that. You know what part of it, I think too, is, is that a lot of the confidence that is built into you depends on how you were raised. And in, if you were raised in a family where girls were treated different than boys, I think there's definitely going to be something that's just going to like naturally come out through you, the way that you interact the way that you behave, the way to carry, but in general, you carry yourself. Um, I, I have friends that till today, you know, they were raised in a family where there was boys and girls. And you would think in this day of age, of age, um, when, for example, the family is talking about what would happen if mom and dad would, you know, pass away tomorrow, unfortunately, you know, or become incapable of taking care of themselves who would be taking care of the family estate, you know, these close friends that I have, they'll say, Oh, well, everything's going to go to my brothers. (laughs) And so, you know, they're already automatically taking themselves out of the picture because they know that in this, in this home, you know, that they, they grew up, you know, their, their, I guess you could say their, their value or their, or their thoughts or, the way that they would handle situations wouldn't be like the boys would. Right. Or, I mean, even I think cultural differences is a big one because some family dynamics are more like, okay, the the men take care of things versus the women in a cultural aspect. I mean, my household, it was just me and my brother. So we, I don't, I think it would have just been whoever was the oldest, which is me. (laughs) So (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, Hey, you, you take care of that. Like you're the oldest, you know, more, I mean, it's like a five-year difference. So. Yeah. And I, and I think it, it depends too, like uh, not only with confidence, so what was leading to my next question, which will hold off because we shortened the show a little bit. So we're going to hold this off to the next segment and something to think about. So um, I've come to find that if uh, an attractive woman is kind of flirting with me, I'm kind of flirting back. And if she said the exact same thing, an unattractive woman said, I would kind of take offense to that. Is that the same for women? So if it's, if it's one of those, you know, burly, ugly kind of like guys, it's like, Hey, uh, I want to take you out on a date. Uh, you know, are you available Friday versus like the, the, the very cut muscly, like he just grew out his beard, like smells of like, 
I don't know, uh, oh. Kenneth Cole, like, and he's just like this hot hunk and mess comes to you and says the exact same thing. So I think it Why depends. It I, don't know. I, 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 think, I, don't know. I think you answer first, Jackie. No, no, no. We got to hold on. Oh, we're Thank waiting. Okay. First. Oh, we're thinking about break. it. <laughs> <laughs> we shortened the show. So, okay, so okay. Uh, our first commercial break. So hold on to that question. Think of an answer and uh, we'll get back to you. So with our first commercial break, I am pleased and uh, honored to uh, bring our uh, commercial because every, um, oh, I got notes. So we have uh, RCO Network has uh, completed or is uh, completing workshops regarding um, small business education. And so on, it's going to be for members only. So if you're a member of RCO Network, every second Tuesday of every month at 4 p.m., uh, we'll be doing our workshops. And we created, uh, Insight Productions created a new video introducing those workshops. So our next workshop is February 9th at 4 p.m. And I'm honored to present that intro video. So hang on there. Hang on to that question. We'll be right back. So welcome back. That was our intro video for our monthly workshops. Again, RCO Network performs with the workshops 4 p.m. every second Tuesday of every month. We are back here with Miss Jacqueline Villalobos of Arizona Notary Signing Agents. The question that was on the table, if you're hot, <laughs> does that give you leverage in somebody asking you out for a date? Whether or not you're taken, whether or not you're in a position, whether or not you want it or not, or at least to ask for the date. Uh, what is the line? Is it okay? Why is it not okay? All right. Well, I think, I think Jackie can take that. First. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, I think, you know, before we went on a, on a quick break there, um, I was sharing that I've had situations where because of my great looks, humbly speaking. <laughs> oh boy. There you go. The um, <laughs> um, I've actually lost opportunities, you know, and I, I don't know if I, if I've actually um, been able to get opportunities because, you know, I look good or I'm attractive or uh, I'm honestly, um, you know, I, I've, I've definitely only heard of the one of the one time where I didn't get it because like, somebody would be jealous of me working in that space. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think there, there's way more to it than just being attractive. I think in, in these days, um, there's still a lot of other factors that play into, into it, such as um, race, age. Um, and it's things that we don't talk about, but they still happen, you know, and, and because people to, 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 a high level of degree, I know that that's not okay. You know, these are the reasons why we don't talk about it, you know, but um, I think that in, 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 a, in, a, in a, another field too, I mean, there's definitely the possibility that you do get a job because you're attractive and you're good looking. I remember my time doing uh, brand ambassador um, roles where literally you getting the job depended on you having a good body and meeting the, the, I guess you could say the job description, which you had to be at least like, you know, five, five fit into a size, smaller medium. <laughs> I worked at Hooters. So I, I know exactly what fitting like into the standard. And I've all, I've also done promotional stuff when I was younger, which I, when I was skinnier <laughs> and it's, um, COVID. it's COVID. It's not even it's not, <laughs> no, it's not. I can't blame it on COVID anymore. It's not oh, COVID. Sure. Okay. I'm just gaining weight. <laughs> but, 
Um, I've been in those roles and those jobs where, I mean, it's a brand and they're promoting their brand. So, you know, I've always understood that being a thing, you know, they have a type of look that they're looking for. I think that kind of the, the base question that you're asking Robert of like, does it change if someone's more attractive? I think like Jackie said, there's, I'm sorry, I'm Jacqueline, Jackie, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I'm like, I don't Jackie's know. It's, it's actually both. Okay, cool. I'm like, I'm just going to cut your name short. I don't know if you go by that, but, um, but I think it, depends on much more than that. So, you know, it depends because if you're single versus taken, you're obviously going to react differently. It's going to come off differently. You're going to be like, oh, okay, no thanks. You know, versus it depends. If you're single. It depends. <laughs> right, right. So if you're single, maybe it depends on their attractiveness, right? Or how they say it or their personality, or I feel like it's not necessarily a one size fits all. If you know someone's personality is crap, and they come up to you and they're like, hey, baby, you want to go get a drink after? And you're like, you're real cute, but no, thank you. That does, like, you know, there could be a guy with a great personality and you're like, I don't know if this is a date or not, but I like you as a person, you know, let's hang out. And that's, that's, you know, single, obviously, you know, if you're taking, it's like, oh, hey, I'm, let me invite my boyfriend or husband or whoever, you know, it's, there's always going to be a difference depending on what the approach is and all those factors. Have you ever had anybody tell you, um, that's okay. I don't care if you're married or taken as long as he don't know. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Um, I will say that's worked both ways. I've had my own experiences, which I will not get into details. I've definitely had people say that. And my thing is if your intentions are like, obviously if they're like, oh, they don't have to know that's, you know, shady, but if they're like, oh no, no, no. You know, it's like, like. I, I'm dating someone too. Like, I just want to go out for beers or whatever. Like, I don't think that being friends with somebody, as long as there isn't ill intentions, like it depends on the comfort level in your relationship too. And so, you know, if that's a whole nother topic, because I feel like if you and your partner are comfortable with a certain level of something, then you're comfortable with it. You know, if you work things out or talk or discuss things and have that communication, then it, just depends on what your, what your, I guess, situation is. <laughs> well, so. I, I, I will be upfront and fair and completely honest. I okay. have uh, met up with, you know, uh, partners before, before getting engaged and all, you know, um, I've met up with people in different industries. I've met up with different, um, you know, people. I even hired sometimes because they were more attractive and I am, I am completely guilty that I, I'm be upfront and honest. You know, is there is there things that um, that women can be more honest about in in relating to men or just in general? Because I, I half the half the freaking time I think women are flirting with me, but they're just sometimes friendly. But that's just my mentality. That's my filter, right? I'm I'm a, I'm a guy with you know certain parts that are always kind of on. I, I'm hoping that somewhere around 60, 65, those will be kind of turned off. But that's me being honest and upfront. They're just, always on. <laughs> It's a, it's a camera that doesn't shut up. <laughs> maybe, maybe, in, I don't know, weird wording. <laughs> I, I, I was being honest. I expect honesty back. So I'm putting it on the table. So I'm sharing my inner thoughts, but I'll probably get it from Violet later. So <laughs> You know what, what it's hard about, because but... <laughs> when you're talking about like, you know, when you hire somebody and they just happen to be the most attractive one, I think that could also come into the factors where, um, you know, that just person, their, their attractiveness may come from the way that they present themselves, where they comb their hair and they right. smell clean and <laughs> I, I think you know, that's very they're put true. together. So <laughs> right. that, you know, I think that comes, comes into the picture where this person is, is put together, you know, therefore that makes them look attractive. Cause right. I'll tell you what, sometimes you might find somebody and whether it's in the workplace or outside of the workplace where, you know, you look at them and they may not be the cutest fish in the sea, <laughs> but there's something about them. Right. Right. I agree. And it's yeah. like, Jackie's it's like, of course talking about me, but <laughs> it's funny. I love your hair, by the way. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. The situations where, um, like when, you know, when I was, I guess, single and not with my boyfriend, um, you would like meet people 
and then you'd like go out with them again or, or introduce them to your friends and you kind of are you like them because you like them and you find them attractive for whatever reason but you preface to your friends like hey so um he's not the cutest but he's really nice and that like you tell your girlfriends like yeah no he's gonna come out he's not the cutest but <laughs> right so I mean it, people don't have to be physically attractive to be attractive it just depends on the presentation and that's that's for anybody I think women as well I think if you present yourself a certain way then you're going to be perceived in that way so I, I want to go to one more question but uh, we're going to get to our next and our last commercial break so the question before the break for you guys to ponder really it really ties back to um, the entrepreneurial role all right who we are um when we're out there meeting people and obviously being, you know, hit on whatever. And it's, it's sometimes it's noticeable. Sometimes it's not, you know, I, I find that women can be very manipulative and I, sometimes it's yes. Sometimes it's no, 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 I <laughs> no way. <laughs> I, I never, <laughs> I've had my own experience. Um, so in, in an entrepreneurial role, is there things that you can tell men or um, that I can tell you that we can obviously put on the table and say, Hey, this is, something appropriate because as women um and and i think that's the culture now too is everything's fair and equal right so the the question of the day is can you still be a woman with everything being fair and equal because fair and equal means hey i'm talking about who i banged last night just as much as i get to hear about uh how whatever women issues are i don't know crap <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say some of those issues though are not shared among so there can't really be a full like like you would never be able to uh, but, but hold it. Oh, I know what you're doing. You're answering the question. <laughs> no, but so, uh, so again, <laughs> then I forget we do the commercial break and I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, we're trying a different format. You know, what we're doing. okay. I'm, so hold on I'm one second. So if you have your questions, <laughs> if you have your questions, comments, go ahead and write them below. We'll answer them, but uh, we'll get back to you right after this commercial break. And um, Kelsey, it, it's home for you. I'm sure. Um, we'll get back to you in just 60 seconds. Well, I have a, a gift and it's a healing gift to help others laugh and, and go through their lives. And I just want to share that. I would love to have just a really healthy relationship with everybody and be the person that I am in helping others grow. If you're a true entrepreneur, you have the spirit that's going to carry through and they're self-motivating and reliant upon themselves for everything. Suburban is a company that hangs its hat on its reputation. You know, we're all about that handshake and a smile and the pat on the back. I believe in networking so you can meet other like-minded people and trade business secrets and help each other grow. My name is Jeffrey Wasaklo and I'm the marketing director for Suburban Mortgage. And this is our CEO network. I did. So that was uh, Jeffrey Pasaclo, Suburban Mortgage. I want to welcome all you back with uh, our special guest today, uh, Miss Jacqueline Villalobos of El Mixor and uh, Notary Services, Arizona, uh, along with my co-host, Kelsey Rodness of Suburban Mortgage. Did you say uh, happy birthday to, uh, to Jeffrey, Kelsey? What was her birthday this week? Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, definitely said Boy. <laughs> So um, I it in my mind, I'd forget my own birthday if it wasn't my birthday. Oh, yeah, that 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 does tend to happen. So um, I believe we uh, may have lost Jacqueline for a minute, but we're going back to the same question we had. So if you uh, any questions or comments, um, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. But the question is, Miss Rogness, since I have you on, given that women want everything, our culture basically wants everything fair and equal. Is I don't that think possible? that's entirely true, first off. Well, hold on, hold on. Let me finish the question. Oh, yeah. Hey, fair and equal, let me finish the question. <laughs> so, given that our culture, predominantly, maybe not you, 
the 99 percent of people out there <laughs> that want everything that women want everything fair and equal can we have equality and still maintain gender roles and gender differences i mean i think that gender is always going to be different you're going to have differences i mean just like a personality though um there's strong personality types and not strong personality types i think that our differences are what makes things fun and interesting for life so I think that if you sat there and made things be exactly the same for everybody all the time, I don't know, or like you took away, I guess, if it was like, oh, women have to wear the same uniform as men because I've actually had that happen where I was unable to order anything that fit myself to work in the car shop and um, it was awful. They did not fit at all. The crotch was, was about 10 feet long and I, uh, when I tried it on, they laughed when I came out of the shop. Was that, and was was that like, a literal? Was that a literal measurement? <laughs> I, I swear, it went to my knees. Like I don't know oh. what they do with men's crotches in work pants, but anyway. <laughs> There's a lot going I, down there. I would be really like. <laughs> well, you said that it was about ten inches, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I oh, might have okay. said feet, but. <laughs> But either way, I mean, it, it was definitely like, it didn't work for, and I got in trouble for not wearing this men's uniform where they didn't have a women's cut for it. So it's kind of interesting because I just feel like you, everything is never going to be exactly like, oh, super equal. Let's do it across the board. Like if you don't celebrate and know your differences and that goes for anything, then I, I don't really think that things would be that interesting. Like it's interesting because you walk into, you know, let's say the water cooler where the, all the men are around the water cooler talking about cars and whatever and le late night dates, whatever it is. It, and then you walk to the women's water cooler and they're talking about something completely different. So if you different, if you took that away, it would be it wouldn't be interesting. So yeah, those differences are good. <laughs> and and I'll, I'll get to Jackie in a second. I mean, like, and coming from a guy too, it's like, you could be wearing a burqa. You could be wearing like, like I don't know, like some, some people in the Middle East wear that whole like outfit. You can only see their ankles. And, and for a guy, sometimes just seeing the ankle gets you all crazy inside. You know, that's, that's something that's unavoidable. That's, it's crazy. Cause and as much as, as, cerebral as I try to be, I try to be very, you know, understanding of my own emotions, own personality. I can't get over becoming human. You know, there's certain things that, you know, if you walked in this office, you're wearing just the plainest outfit, maybe, maybe form fitting, you know, myself, if not somebody else would be checking you out, you know, you just, it's unavoidable for, you know, as far as like sex goes, but. I mean, I think that, that a big thing about it too, is just like, there's always going to be a difference in, I guess how people, like Jackie said earlier, how people were raised affects how they act as well and react to the opposite sex. So it's, I mean, if you take away that that difference though, like even going to a bar, hanging out with women is much different than hanging out with men. And that's why it's good to have friends that are you know, male and female. And it's good to be in a workplace sometimes with men and women because you kind of get into this, oh, it's a, you know, same old, same old, but when you make new friends and that's why I, that's why I always try and make new friends. I love hanging out with yeah. everybody. And I love like, oh, I want to hang out with this person today because you know, this, this is fun with them. And maybe the next person doesn't have that same quality. And that goes for every difference you could ever think of. <laughs> so, so what are the questions? We have a question from the audience, but uh, back to you, Jackie. From the audience? Yes. So, so back to you, Jackie, um, can, can you still be a woman? Uh, in a fair and equal society, you, you know, can it be, can we have attainably equal rights between men and women and still maintain our differences as, as men and women? Well, what, as far as maintaining the differences, I think that's very important and we have to kind of focus on, on preserving that. Um, one thing that, you know, is definitely something that we have to look at is science. And when we look at, you know, the difference between men and women, like physiologically and, you know, in, in our brains, I mean, something here's, I'm a fact lover. Like I just love like little details here and there. <laughs> so, looking at facts? Always, yeah, no, like I actually, I, I've worked with, um, psychiatry for a while. Um, 
And um, did you guys know that the male brain is 10% larger than the female brain? However, the female brain is optimized for intuitive thinking. So imagine a world where if we didn't have this like men and women, like, and you know, the, exactly like there, there's such a, a big chance that you can lose the opportunity to have this like natural balance that comes with the differences of being male and female, you know, just if we just look from the physiological standpoint, not even from the exper experiential part, you know, where, you know, the way that you grow up or your, you know, family dynamic, you know? Well, yeah. that, uh, that 10% is probably in the 10 inches that Kelsey was talking about. <laughs> but uh... I swear to you, that was the most embarrassing <laughs> work moment, like ever. And I will forever remember it for the rest of my life, going in the bathroom to change into these like men's clothes and coming out and the shirt was long and the pants were too big. It was like the smallest size they had. And I looked ridiculous. And the men in the shop were like, really? That's what they're making you wear? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, nice crotch. <laughs> like, Is that a Hooters? <laughs> it wasn't at Hooters. It was oh. after Hooters, actually. Oh, then so can the you imagine a man coming into Hooters and like being a waitress? <laughs> I mean, I, I can see Why that. Not? Like I picture that right now and... I know somebody would do it and be okay and happy. <laughs> I would do it for the challenge, but I wouldn't do it for a career. So. I mean, there's men that dress up for Halloween as a Hooters girl. I've seen I wouldn't it. go that far. There's men that wait all year for Halloween so they could dress as a woman. Right. I, I don't do that. Ponder that. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so the question for the audience was, what is one of the challenges you ladies have come across when you feel uncomfortable with the opposite sex? Well... well I Sorry, you go. go ahead. <laughs> like, no, you, no, you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So for me, the big thing is like, I just don't make eye contact. And so that automatically creates an RBF for me. Like I've been told to my face, like you have an RBF. <laughs> that's, a, has. that's that's <laughs> resting bizarre face for the yes. uh, uninformed. Exactly. And so I'll just be like, you don't like it, then don't look at it. <laughs> What's oh, funny though is not making eye contact and not um, like, I guess being Friendly. forward about stuff or like like not smiling, I guess. People are like, oh, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? And it's just like, it, it's so all or nothing. Like you're so used to like, either you're super smiley, have your makeup on and look really good. Or like you're having an off day and you're just like, man, I can't wait till work is over. Like, oh, what's what's wrong? You look sad. And it's like, I just want to get through today. Like, let's just chill. <laughs> oh boy. Well, as we come to the end of the show, <laughs> boy, that 40 minutes just eats up right away. So, um, <laughs> you know, before we end, there's a couple, you know, little tidbits and stuff that we have to do for the, for the show and for us, for our CEO network, because that's what we do. But uh, I, I guess since we're at this moment, right. And we probably need, you know, several hours to talk about this, um, if there was one thing that you can tell guys, I mean, this goes to both you guys and then I will, you can probably, you can ask me whatever you want, but um, is there anything that you as women can relate to men to say, yeah, what's been on your mind for a long time? And you can take it out on me, you know, if it's pent up anger, aggression or whatever, is there anything that you would like to tell men, you know, um, whether, you know, in your experience or whatever to, to me or whoever, um, is there one thing you want to tell men that you've been wanting to tell be because of this issue? I have a, kind of kind of I don't know if it's funny I have a serious one you have the floor Miss Rodness no no woman is going to want you following her home from the bar oh yeah I, <laughs> I remember that <laughs> yeah it's not <laughs> hot <laughs> we don't want that <laughs> not unless it's us <laughs> don't follow women home <laughs> And uh, Miss Jackie, is there anything you want to tell men out there as they're watching, you know, and, and it really relates to everything, every capacity It's not only just business as we, you know, go out there and you're an entrepreneur and as you're facing these issues, is there something you want to tell men, uh, particularly regarding sexuality, Hey, that uh, this is something you should be aware of or something I've been wanting to tell you for, for ever. Well, I guess one of the things would be like, whether it's on a personal or professional level, never assume that a smart, beautiful woman is a threat to you. Um, because 
you know, a lot of times that could be like your biggest alliance. And then you could be like a power couple, whether it's professionally or personally. <laughs> That's why I have Kelsey. We're a power couple. Yes. <laughs> professional power couple. Friend, friend couple. <laughs> Well, we have, we got, we got, well, this is professional. We're on a professional show. No, I know. I know. I was like, we're also friends. Yeah, that too. <laughs> uh, power business couple. Well, there you go. Work wife. No. There you go. I don't like that. No. Yeah. Uh, tell, tell Cole I said sorry. Uh, <laughs> he's probably watching and like, oh, shit. I'm, I'm probably he's in like, trouble when I get home too. So. I already got a screenshot of, uh, of the promotion, like, with a question and he's like why are you being hostile about it and i was like i don't know i thought you were saying something about it so <laughs> i was like i'm sorry <laughs> well as we come to the end of the show miss we have no uh, other questions from the audience but uh we do have to do some promo for us so uh with that said if uh i'm gonna put this up if you want to go ahead and market your business here with us at our CEO network, we create your marketing videos, offer you social media management support and highlight you at events such as today's call instant messages here at Facebook at our CEO network for details about becoming a sponsor and marketing opportunities. Uh, I want to be the first to say thank you, Miss Villalobos uh, for, for coming on today's show. I'm going to go ahead and promote you as well because we have a couple things you got going on. Um, El Mixer is every uh, Wednesday at 7 p.m. This is on Facebook, Facebook Live, just like a show here at RCO Network. Uh, Facebook Live El Mixer show. If you want to go down to Facebook and check them out every Wednesday at 7 p.m., you can hear about uh, business networking and um, how Jacqueline helps um, small businesses in market their business. So this is in Spanish, right, Miss Jackie? Yeah, it's, Sp it's Spanglish, I say. Every once in a while, we'll oh, like mix it up. <laughs> literally <laughs> so if you want to go check out her show on wednesdays again el mixer show uh on facebook and then uh contact information miss uh miss jackie i'm going to go and put that up as well uh we have uh, arizona notary signing agents uh, i put on there the uh website jacqueline um also the oh, yeah. el mixer show but um, is there any other way you want people to contact you regarding anything uh, business related uh, about your show any about the topics we talked about today because we kind of Gosh, kind of I'm all over the place. Here. I have LinkedIn, I have uh, Instagram, uh, TikTok, everything. Um, so that would be Jacqueline Vlogs with a V, like via Lobos. Um, and my phone number, if there's any uh, title agencies out there, es uh, escrow officers, um, loan officers, uh, you can contact <laughs> me <laughs> at 626 three eight four eight five six three yes that's a california number and i've had it forever so you can reach la, me there all the time la puente she's from la puente who would have yes. known all you california people keep coming to arizona hey i'm in arizona and almost like give me years. like five more years and then i'll live half of my life here <laughs> <laughs> uh, i know we, there were so many things that we didn't get to i mean it was a little bit shorter show um, is there anything else, Ms. Ms. Rognes? I know you're a loan officer. You might want to, you know, contact Jackie as she uh, comes across your path here and there. Yeah. Um, so any, any I mean, last I words of advice? Uh, definitely have title companies that I, I don't know how the process works for them to, I guess, vet whoever comes in, but we can always discuss it. And uh, no, I don't have anything. Ms. Jackie, any last words? No. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. And I look forward to continuing to to work with you guys hopefully in the near future and we'll stay connected on social media absolutely and, and you know as i was reflecting today and talking about the topic there, there's so many things that we can discuss and go through i think at the end of the day it's not about you know uh, your sexual orientation or how you present yourself it's really about attractiveness and attractiveness doesn't mean how you look necessarily. I mean, I, I think that's sometimes the gateway where people can start a conversation. They may feel intimidated. They may feel more comfortable based on how you look, but it's really about your attractiveness, your confidence level, okay. yeah, your presentation. I mean, like, I, I mean, I know Violet's already texting me like, why are you wearing that? I'm like, oh, now I'm all self-conscious. She's like, is that your undershirt? You should see she's texting me on here. Yeah, and I'm really like, funny. no, it's my regular shirt. I was cold. It's cold in here. I didn't look at your jacket until now. And I my, swear, it's because it's so, it's so tiny on the screen, it looks like my bath towel. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. That's not the <laughs> point. Like it. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Thank you. You're, force, you're forcing me to drink another beer. 
<laughs> forcing you, right? <laughs> but but truly, I think you know, when it comes to marketing yourself and starting this endeavor, it's not um, your gender plays into who you are. Yes, but uh, your attractiveness really comes from who you are inside, your confidence level. Because it's not about getting through the front door. And I'm sure, as Jackie and Kelsey tell you, or can tell you. You can meet a really hot person, a really sexy person, but then they have no substance behind them. You oh, know, there's th- <laughs> yes, one hundred percent. You know, they could be they could be dumb as a rock or whatever. And I, I've come across that too. And uh, many stories I can share you, but I'm with women, so I don't want to do that because of what we talked about today's show. Oh, now you're not gonna you're not gonna share fun stories anymore. Well, we ran out of time. I'm sorry. <laughs> How convenient. Uh, how convenient. But again, uh, finding your value, finding your confidence, um, discovering and putting yourself in these situations where I think sometimes fear puts you really, really tests who you are as a person. And you come out of it with confidence or you come out of it with a lack of confidence. But as people see that, as people see that progression and see that within you, they become very attracted to that. So as you go forward, as everybody here at RCO Network, our members and our guests, um, you know, take that into account and uh, do things that challenge yourself. And hopefully you're more confident out of, um, in the end of things. So with that said, thank you everybody for coming in. We'll see you next week, next Thursday, unedited with uh, Kelsey Rognes and me, Robert Morales, RCO Network. Thanks everybody. Bye.